Alex, welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd make a quick little video here showing my process on reading and using a perfume formulation spreadsheet. Uh, it includes how to interpret a formula, what dilution or percentages your aroma chemical should be at, how to calculate and increase your dilutions in a formula, and most importantly, how to understand the percentages in your blends. It's by no means the holy grail of spreadsheets, but it works for me. And I've thumbed it down or I've simplified it a bit here just, just for the video. Mine is more complicated. I've got more colors. I've got more columns. I've added prices to the aroma chemicals or the materials to come up and calculate the actual pricing of the formulation if you're making a fragrance or if you're making an accord or a base. Other perfumers have their own spreadsheets or their own layouts. And I know some perfumers who use a couple of the great apps out there for their, for their businesses that they run. So let's get to it. Let me go through the spreadsheet here quickly, go through the columns and the cells, what they mean, and we'll walk through a couple of examples here. What we have in front of us is the formula. It's a demo formula for Fahrenheit by Dior. It's a Fougere men's fragrance made in the late 80s i think it was 1988. Um, so here we have in this cell here i'm hoping you can see where i'm clicking here so here's the name of the, of the fragrance here is where i got it from this is from freighterworks it's a freighterworks demo formula on their freighterworks site they sell aroma chemicals a fantastic company i purchase a lot of aroma, aroma chemicals from them they're based in new zealand and they have many formulas for fragrances on their site that are free to the public. In this cell here, it is the derived percentage of the formula that I have here. Um, we'll get to that later. And column D here, column D, D2 and D3 is the derived weight of the formulation. The columns here, this is the, the materials that are being used. This is, the next column is the weight of the formulas now. Usually you'll see formulas in PPT, which is parts per thousand. Uh, so for instance, this ISO E Super is 255 parts per thousand, uh, it, which equals about 25.5%. Now you don't have to have it in parts per thousand. They can be in parts per hundred or they can be parts in 893. It doesn't matter what the formula weights add up to. What's important here is column E here, which is the percentage of all the materials in the formula. Uh, back to column D, this is just a substitute. So if you don't have one of these materials, you can substitute it if possible for another uh, material that you have. Uh, so again, column E is the percentage of, of all these materials in the formula it should obviously add up to 100%. These are the dilutions of the materials in the formula now. I should have stated that I tend to dilute all my aroma chemicals, all my materials to 10%, sometimes 1% or even 0.1%. Uh, but I do keep my undiluted materials handy and we'll go through why in just a second here. So again, the dilutions in column F, so ISO E super is 25.5% of the formula and it's at a 10% dilution. The next item here, galaxlide is at a 5% dilution. Vertifex Cur is at a 10% dilution. Okay, let's go to column G, H, and I up at the top here. This is the weight that this formula or these amounts are based on. So this is currently working at an eight gram formulation for Fahrenheit. If you wanted to make 80 grams, say for a 100 milliliter bottle, you would change it up here. 480 grams, well, let's change it back to 10. For 10 grams, ISO E Super at a 10% dilution would have 0.255 grams of the undiluted material, and you would have 2.295 grams of the solvent, ethanol or triethyl citrate. Um, I tend to use ethanol or perfumer's alcohol with all my dilutions. For a total of 2.55 grams, 
So my ISO e super is diluted at 10%. I would add 2.55 grams of ISO e super to come up with a 10 gram formula. So the next row is Galaxolite 50 IPM. Now Galaxolite undiluted is very, let's call it thick. So usually when you purchase Galaxolite, it is it comes diluted, uh, usually at 50%. And this Galaxolite is at a 50% dilution in isopropyl mirror state. So following my logic, you would think that if it's at 100% dilution, you're down to 10. If it's at a 50% dilution, I should have it at five. But I dilute my Galaxolite to 10% also. Moving all the way down to here. Triple all 10% is in the formula. So if this was triple all at 100%, I would have it at a 10 here, because I'm dividing really everything by 10. If I want the triple all at a 10% as the formula states, I would divide the 10 by 10, obviously. So I'd be using a 1% dilution on the triple all. Hope you're following my logic. So I had 1% there. And the chamomile, the Roman chamomile, it's also 10%. So my dilution would be at 1%. Up here, there's dipropyl glycolate in the formula. That's just a solvent. As I am working with dilutions, I'm not going to add more solvent to it. So I'll make this a zero. So assuming I have all the aroma chemicals, there are no substitutes and all these materials are at 10% other than the triplol or the chamomile, which are at 1%, I would come up with a derived percentage of 9.914%. So, so with these dilutions, as stated in the formula as it is, with the triplol at 1% and the Roman chamomile at 1%, the aggregated dilution of the formula is up here, 9.914% in C3. But let's say, we don't want our fragrance at 9.9%. We want it at 12%. How do we get to 12% here? What do we need to do? What we would do is substitute one of these materials, these diluted materials, with the material that is undiluted or neat. For instance, if we added ISO E super undiluted instead of at a 10% dilution, let's change it you would still add 0.2713 grams of ISO E super. That shouldn't change. You're adding the same amount, 0.2713 grams of ISO E super. The only difference is you're adding it neat, so there is no solvent. There is no, it is undiluted. So what happens? The derived dilution of the formula of this Fahrenheit Dior is at 13.1%. Great. We don't want it at 30%. We want it at 12%. So let's knock this back down to 10. Let's try this Vertifex Cur undiluted. We're at 11%. Okay, so we got we upped that by 1%, one full percentage point by adding 100 grams of Vertifex Cur, 100 grams here. So we went from 9.9% to 10.9% by substituting the 10% diluted Vertifex Cur to 100% or undiluted. And that was, 100 grams, or that was 10% of the formula. So if we want to go from 10.9 to 11.912, let's try to figure out another 100 here. So let's also add the bergamot. So we're at 11.978%. And let's take the coumarin. Too much. So what if we add the nutmeg at undiluted? 12.02%, so close enough. So what we've done is we've substituted the diluted materials here. Let's change the color. To undiluted. So in essence, is what we're doing is we're removing some of the alcohol. And we're going from 9.9% to 12%. However, our derived weight went from 10 grams down to 8.2 because there is no solvent in these three. So if we wanted to get our derived weight back to 10, we'd have to increase this. So let's go to 12 here, 
12.1. Oops. 12.1. So we base our formula on 12.125 grams. We add these three materials, neat, the nutmeg, the vertifex curve, and the bergamot, the Roman chamomile and triplol are at 1%. and the rest are at 10%. We would get 10 grams at 12%. Let's hop on over to this sheet here. So this is uh, an Accord, Synthetic Rose Auto number 1056. It's from the book, Perfumes, Cosmetics, and Soaps, Volume 2 by W.A. Poucher. We wanna make the Accord, but we only wanna make three grams of it. And we wanna have it at 10%. However, if you look here on row 18, this aldehyde C11, at 10%, we need 0 0.006 grams of the material. Now my droppers, and most droppers that I've seen, most pipettes, uh, one milliliter, three milliliter pipettes, or the pipetters, the drop is roughly 10 to 15 thousandths, or 0 0.015. So really, if you put one drop of the aldehyde C11, on average, you're gonna get close to three times more than what you wanted, which doesn't, which doesn't work, right? So what we're gonna to have to do is dilute this material. So let me show you here. So instead of a 10% dilution, we're gonna use a 1% dilution, right? And we're gonna, so we divided that by 10, and we're gonna multiply the formula amount by 10 to offset it. So it's 20, Instead, what we wanted was 0 0.006 of the aroma chemical, and that's what we have, right? If we go back to 2 and 10, you want 0 0.006. That's yellow. Okay. So two grams or two parts per thousandth or 0.2% at 10% dilution, we want 0 .006, 0 0.0006 grams of the aroma chemical. And diluted, you're adding 0 0.006 grams of the diluted C11, which is a third of the usual drop. So again, we're gonna dilute, we're going to make it a 1% dilution and we're going to up it. So we're back to 0 0.0006 grams of the aroma chemical, but instead of 0 0.006, we're adding 59 one thousandths, or I don't know, four or five drops. So that works. However, our derived percentage drops to 9.823, so we need to increase that. Let's take our eugenol and add that neat. Oh, doesn't work. Final acetic acid, let's add it neat. I know a lot of folks that only work with undiluted materials. They work with everything neat, 100%. So let's put 100%. All our materials are neat at 100%. We want to get to three grams. And our derived, obviously, percentage is 100%. And 0.3 is the derived weight because I'm working I'm working with a base of 10 here, working with the assumption that everything's diluted 10%. So that's how this sheet works. How much alcohol do we need or ethanol solvent do we need to bring this deck down to 10%? So if we added 1.421 grams of alcohol to this formula, we're getting 10% overall dilution or a derived percentage. However, our weight's only 1.579, so we want half of that. So we want to increase this. Let's make work this on six. Five point. However, we need to increase this number here on the grams we're working with to 5.7. So here we go. 
because of the way this spreadsheet is set up, we need to up our target weight 5.7 grams to achieve our derived weight of 3 grams at 10%. You would add this much of the aroma chemicals. You would add 2.7 grams of the solvent. I mean, you see here, it's obvious here, 300 and 2.7. You're coming up with 3 grams. That's it. Just want to give a quick overview of what I do, of how I'm calculating my formulations. If you want a copy of this sheet, just leave a comment. And if there is demand, I'll upload it onto Google Drive and I'll put it up there for sharing. I realize that all my videos aren't all on perfumery. Uh, it's a hobbyist YouTube channel. And at this stage, all my perfume videos aren't getting that many views because most of my subscribers aren't into perfumery, but I'm hoping to change that a bit here. So as I add more and more content, perfumery content, um, hopefully we'll get some of those views up. So if you want to see more content on the perfumery, I have tagged them as perfumery in the list. Just click on the list and you'll see all my perfume content. So that's it. Like and subscribe. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.